Well, in fact, where we are right now depends who you ask, because according to Beijing, this is actually part of China. Xi Jinping's number one priority is to bring what he sees as a renegade province back under the control of the communist regime. And if Taiwan resists, he's made it abundantly clear that this modern, freewheeling democracy with a population similar to Australia's will become a bloody battlefield. What's happening here right now will shape the world for decades to come. And the fear is that this is where World War III could begin. This might look like an Army Special Forces bunker, but believe it or not, these are everyday Taiwanese who've decided to spend their weekend learning how to defend their country. When given command target, two to the chest, one to the head. Target! Unload, show clear. In a nation clear. with strict gun laws, these replica firearms are about as close as it's possible to get to the real thing. But with the looming threat of a possible Chinese invasion, the number of civilians signing up for weapons training courses here has skyrocketed. Do you think there's a chance China could invade your country? That is why I keep training, because maybe someday, unfortunately, the invaders I can quickly transform to real deal with, with not any big problems. Monday to Friday, 24-year-old Ark Lu is a freelance photographer. But come the weekend, he's focusing his eye on something completely different. I live here, I born here, and my, might be someday I die here. Yes, so I think it's a responsibility for me as a Taiwanese to defend my country, and Taiwan remains Taiwan. shaping up as a fight for freedom, as China's military muscles up and its leader promises to take Taiwan by whatever means necessary. Taiwan is with you! But tonight, we meet the passionate Taiwanese. We have to show this to China, to the world, that we want to defend our homeland. Who are pleading with the Western world to stand up to an increasingly belligerent China. I was a, a called a crime syndicate, disguised as a nation. <laughs> Before it's too late. I have to say, China is not only Taiwan's problem. China is your problem. China is the whole world's problem. A quick history lesson might be helpful. Situated 160 kilometres off mainland China, Taiwan is home to an indigenous population that can be traced back 6,000 years. But it's been a major thorn in China's side since 1949. That's when Mao Zedong won China's civil war and the losing anti-communists fled to the tiny island. Democracy has thrived here, much to the rage of Beijing which has long maintained Taiwan and its population of 23 million people belong to China. And under the leadership of Xi Jinping, the authoritarian superpower has become more aggressive than ever before about achieving unification, threatening a full-scale invasion. Hi, Tom. Hello, Minister. Welcome to the ministry. Thank you, it's great to see you. Yeah, wonderful to see you too. Joseph Wu has the unenviable role of Foreign Minister of Taiwan as his country stares down this threat to its very existence. Got a lot on your plate at the moment. That's right, that's right. A lot of people are saying that uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is the toughest job in Taiwan and probably the toughest uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs position uh, around the world. Uh, indeed, it is very tough uh, looking at China's way of suffocating Taiwan diplomatically. It is not easy. Last month at the Communist Party Congress, Chinese President Xi Jinping scrapped constitutional rules so he could govern for a third term as party leader. His biggest foreign policy goal is to retake Taiwan by force if necessary. The complete reunification of the motherland must be achieved. 
Xi Jinping has been very clear that, that he thinks unification will happen. Mm -hmm. He says it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what he said. Uh, but I think there's something uh, is not there in his thinking. Uh, Taiwan is already a democracy, and there's no way you can pressure the Taiwanese people to accept something that China is offering, and therefore the Taiwanese people reject what China is trying to put on Taiwan. Do you think China is trying to strangle Taiwan? Yes, they are trying from all perspectives. Uh, military is certainly one. And they are also trying to uh, suffocate Taiwan diplomatically. And they are also trying to strangle Taiwan economically. They want to hurt Taiwan. You know, the effect is uh, right opposite. The Taiwanese are more toughened than before in defending ourselves. Raise your f***ing hands in the air! Say hi to the world! The growling lead singer of Taiwanese death metal band Katonic, Freddie Lim, speaks to the country's younger generation. But in recent years, he's found a voice as one of Taiwan's most recognisable politicians. You used to be on a tour bus, now it's a campaign trail. Pretty different for you these days. It's a bit like on tour because you speak uh, to different crowds with kind of the same thing. So there's a bit of crossover of skills. You're still on stage and getting the crowd going. Right. Yeah, and try to express the same energy to different crowds and with the same set. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good turnout. Yeah, I think even it's raining, but I think, yeah, we can see a lot of people. Obviously, these people care a lot about voting, about democracy. Yeah. So, well, I think she's trying to, to introduce Oh, you're getting right called up. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. don't let us hold you up. <laughs> Timing, as they say, is everything. And Freddie has become a front man for Taiwan's independence movement at what he views as a critical point in history. This is the moment that we show our passion about this country, show our will about defending our homeland. Not just to let the Chinese government know, but let the, our friends know that we will fight to the last minute to defend our home. You're the front man of a band, but also a front man for democracy. What does China think about you? They hate me, definitely. Their official uh, medias and televisions has criticized me quite a lot. Even before I was a politician, my band was banned in China. So I think they hate me and they want to remove me. But I will stand firm, yeah. Russia's invasion of Ukraine set off alarm bells in Taiwan a warning of just how quickly and dramatically things can change. Since then, the civil defence movement has exploded in popularity. Everyday Taiwanese taking up not just firearms training, but gaining a whole new set of skills from search and recovery to learning to tie a tourniquet. Wow, there's a lot of people here tonight. Yeah. Thursday night, packed house. Uh, I think, you know, for us, it just, it just reinforces how average Taiwanese is committed to, you know, defending our home, to helping each other, helping their communities. Enoch Wu is a former Special Forces soldier who founded Forward Alliance, a group that better prepares Taiwanese for the disasters of tomorrow. His workshops have never been more in demand than they are right now. You have to understand, our military and our first responders account for just 1% of our population. So we understand that if we ever face a major crisis, the other 99% have to step up. And it starts with staying alive. It starts with staying safe. It starts with helping your neighbor. And that's what we're doing. Is the feeling here that the threat across the water has never been more apparent than right now? Yeah, it's, it's what we see from the Beijing authorities. It's also what we see in Ukraine, right? It's what we saw in Hong Kong. It's what we see around the world. When you're living next to an authoritarian regime, the best thing we can do is to be better prepared. After the Russian invasion of Ukraine this year, there are plenty of young people uh, joining those civil defense groups. And because we just realized that the responsibility to protect the country is not military's 
responsibility. It's everybody's responsibility. And so I can see that there are a lot of young people got inspired by Ukraine. So I, I'm quite optimistic about the future of this country because how the young people show their attitude. If it came to it, would, would you pick up a weapon? Definitely, because I'm older than 45. I'm not in a age that can be recruited by the military any, uh, any, anymore. So I joined the civil defense to learn what I can do. When you took up politics, you probably never thought that in a few years' time you'd be learning how to pick up a weapon. Right. I didn't know that. I didn't know that the, those authoritarian <laughs> governments can be that crazy. And um, But this year, look at what Putin is doing. Yeah, I think they are much, they are crazier than we thought. So we have to be realistic. Yeah. And ready. Yeah, and ready. Prepare ourselves. When it comes to the defence of Taiwan, few are quite as ambitious as Robert Zhao, the multi-billionaire who's ploughing his fortune into building a civilian army. People say uh, it's a lot of money. No, compared to freedom, it's nothing. Recently, China has been stepping up its intimidation tactics, carrying out war games around Taiwan and testing its airspace like never before. In August this year alone, a record number of 446 Chinese aircraft, mainly fighter jets, breached Taiwan's air defence zone. So whenever there's an air incursion by China, this is where Taiwan's scrambling fighter jets from? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So this spot is very, very important. Guarding Taiwan's mountainous east coast is the city of Walian. It's home to 100,000 people and a cluster of key military installations, a place where the roar of F-16 fighter jets is part of everyday life. In my understanding, we can park more than 200 fighter jets here in uh, this neighborhood. So this is quite a, a strategically important location? Oh, very. Because uh, we are standing right next to the Pacific Ocean, and this is one of the biggest uh, military base in Taiwan. Five months ago, Kolos Yataka was a spokesperson for the Taiwanese president. Now she's running for governor of Walian, motivated by a deep concern about China's growing aggression. China has been threatening, showing their muscles, and they have been warning Taiwanese, don't do anything um, crazy. They want to scare us, they want to block us. That's why they send fighter jets and warships here. If this descended to war, would you expect that your allies w would come to Taiwan's aid? We can never speak for them, yeah. We cannot speak for other countries. Sounds like a fighter jet yeah, taking yeah, off above us right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You hear this every day, all the time. People see the fighter jets taking off every day. And we hear that even when you are buying bubble tea at the street, the fight, you can see fighter jets flying over. It affects your work, it affects your life. But we have to live with it. That's how people feel. The pride of this country is on display at Taiwan's National Day celebrations, along with plenty of defiance. The Taiwanese president declaring there will be no compromise on freedom and democracy. As the threat level rises, more than ever, this is a country that needs friends standing shoulder to shoulder. If we were to lose Taiwan, uh, I think uh, all across the Indo-Pacific, uh, the gates would be open to China, and we can't even begin to calculate the consequences. It sounds like this is the great existential threat of our age. That's exactly what it is. 
Former US National Security Advisor John Bolton is a seasoned veteran of world diplomacy, a hawk who believes it's time for the US and its allies to get much tougher with Beijing. Do you think we need boots on the ground in Taiwan? Perhaps some US forces stationed there to send a message that, that the world has Taiwan's back? I think a US presence would be a good idea. And the ideal outcome here is that China says, this is too hard for us to do, and they back away. But if China decides it is up for the fight, from the West's point of view, is this really worth World War III? I don't think China wants to take over an island that's a heap of smoking rubble. I think if we do this right, Xi Jinping can be deterred, and he must know that if he makes a play for Taiwan and fails, that that is regime threatening for him. So we just have to be more sophisticated than we've been here. We also have to realize we're in for a long-term struggle. This is not a short-term proposition. If there's one person who's readying Taiwan for the long haul, it's billionaire businessman Robert Zhao. What's the thinking behind the vest? Yeah, it's just a, provide a protection against the terrorists. <laughs> but do you think you're a target? I criticize China uh, very strongly. At an age when most people would be winding down, the 75-year-old is gearing up for the battle of his life. What does this place mean to you? Freedom, democracy, hope, future. <laughs> this, is a, this is a place I want to protect. <laughs> The microchip magnate caused a sensation in September when he pledged 100 million US dollars to bolster his country's defences. His ultimate aim is to train a 3 million strong civilian army, complete with 300,000 snipers and supported by a million military drones. The real defence has to be the bravery of a Taiwanese people, the willingness to protect your nation. Yeah, that's a real defence. A hundred million dollars is a hell of a lot of money. You, you, you're really putting your money where your mouth is. People say <clears throat> it's a lot of money. No, compared to freedom, <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> but, but, but I already swear that uh, uh, I will not live to see Taiwan become Hong Kong. Yeah. I will fight for it. There's another unexpected consequence for all of us if war does break out in Taiwan. This high-tech country manufactures more than 90% of the world's computer chips, as well as the components that are critical for everything from phones to cars to fighter jets. If Taiwan's microchip factories are destroyed or their supply chains disrupted, the ramifications globally would be dire. If you take Taiwan's microchip production away from the world, what happens? A global economic catastrophe. Jason Matheny is head of US think tank, the RAND Corporation, and an expert in threats to humanity. He's forecast a grim future if war begins in Taiwan. Virtually all of the world's advanced microchip industry is based there, a quirk of circumstance that now presents an acute risk to us all. It would affect all of us. Um, it would mean that we wouldn't have access to the devices that most of us depend on as part of our daily lives. It comes down to, you know, around a dozen or so large factories uh, that are in a relatively small strip of land um, producing what's, what's really the foundation of the digital economy today. It's really an extraordinary thing um, that the, um, the centerpiece of our economy is concentrated in such a small piece of the planet and one of the most complicated ones geopolitically. It's the Achilles heel of, of the world's economy. That's right. I think if, um, if we had thought about this, you know, decades ago and thought, um, would we want the Achilles heel of the global economy to be in a place that 
China views as the fulfillment of its national destiny, um, I think we probably would have picked a different place. Such is the complexity of microchip production that Jason believes it would genuinely take decades to build replica facilities in other parts of the world. It would also come at a completely untenable cost. So in his mind, the only sensible path forward is to appropriately arm Taiwan right now to counter China's military threat. It would be a fraction of the cost of dealing with the repercussions of some massive disruption of the supply chain. It would be a fraction of that cost to arm Taiwan to the level needed uh, to prevent such a disruption. There have been some claims that the United States would try to blow up these facilities themselves if China were to invade so that they didn't fall into Chinese hands. Do, do you give that much credit? I think whoever is president uh, during that moment would have a really difficult dilemma um, because on the one hand, you would be deciding whether or not you wanted these uh, manufacturing facilities to be controlled by China, uh, used as a choke point for the global supply chain that would give China enormous leverage geopolitically. On the other hand, uh, if we destroyed those uh, manufacturing facilities, uh, we would be responsible for significant global economic damage. And so whatever choice is made in that situation is, is one that I wouldn't envy. Um, and I think the ideal case is one where we prevent the invasion from happening at all. In this battle for hearts and minds, Beijing has an unlikely ally pushing its agenda inside Taiwan. So they call you the White Wolf. <laughs> Some people call you a gangster. Gangster? Yeah. I don't care. In one part of Taiwan, locals stare down the threat from China every single day. We've come to Kinmen Island, a bizarre relic of a bygone time and a living museum to war. While the main island of Taiwan may be 160 kilometres away from Kinmen, the skyscrapers of the Chinese mainland loom less than five kilometres across the water. Here, they know more than anyone about the brutality of China once the sworn enemy that rained hell from above. Nationalist soldiers watch the Red China mainland from tiny Kinmen Island on guard against further attacks from the enemy whose bombs and guns have pounded villages into tipsy tilted walls and piles of rubble. In the 1950s, China's military launched a devastating artillery bombardment on Kinmen, firing half a million shells in a six-week barrage in a continuation of the bloody civil war. In fact, so many shells remain that they are now being melted down and turned into knives for the tourists who come to visit this Cold War curiosity. The entire island is littered with old military sites, the beaches still bristling with defences, and below ground, an extraordinary network of military tunnels from the bad old days of conflict. Up until the 70s, China was still regularly bombing this island, and this network of tunnels is where the locals would come to take shelter. Now, they thought that threat had passed, but all of a sudden, with tensions rising, the fear is they may need these tunnels again. China is so close. Yeah, really so close. You can see the buildings over there. Yeah, but it's a different world. Yeah, really. It's one o'clock. Bob, you should write a sentence. It's one o'clock. 23-year-old Kevin Poe is a teacher in what is for now a quiet frontier with close economic links to the Chinese mainland. Very good. It's one o'clock. He's nervous about the future, 
but hopeful Kinmen won't face Chinese attack once again. People here, they still remember the memories from the war, and we have many forts here. Yeah, if something happens, we can just run into the fort or the tunnels here. Do you think they will take over one day? Maybe. How would you feel about that? I think people in Taiwan, especially younger generation, we will fight just like what happened in Hong Kong. So you would fight? Yeah, if, I, if my country needs me, I will fight. Is that a scary prospect? Yeah, <laughs> kind of scary, because in our generation, we only see the war on internet, in videos. We don't know how scary it is. Yeah, so we really don't want the war. But not everyone in Taiwan is on board with fighting off communist rule. Around 7% of the population is in favour of unification with China. The irony being that they are free to voice that anti-government sentiment in democratic Taiwan, while such rebellion in China would be punished dearly. What country are we in right now? It's China. Taiwan is part of China, it's no question. The majority of people here do not want to be part of China. Yeah, because they bring wash. Back in the capital, Taipei, we met Chang An Lo, controversial frontman of the Chinese Unification Promotion Party. So they call you the White Wolf. <laughs> wolf can walk a thousand miles, even though slow, but I keep going. You know, leopard, tiger, you know, fast, boom, then stop. I think wolf, yes, I'm wolf. Some people call you a gangster. Gangster? Yeah. I don't care. To call the White Wolf's past colourful would be an understatement. He was once one of Taiwan's most feared triad leaders, convicted kidnapper and heroin trafficker who spent jail time in the US. Now, he's a political campaigner who leads a fringe pro-unification party and is viewed by many here as Beijing's yes-man in Taiwan. I think the peaceful unification is the best way for Taiwanese future. No other way. Because you think the only other alternative is unification by force? Uh, eventually, yes. Yeah. Because majority Chinese want to take Taiwan back, you know, the best way is peaceful. By force, it's tragedy for Taiwanese people. China's foreign spruikers are renowned for veiled threats and intimidation, and they are traits Taiwan's white wolf has in spades. Many people in Taiwan have asked for Australia to defend Taiwan militarily. What would it mean for Australia if they did come to Taiwan's aid? If you send a truth to fight with mainland China, many Australia soldiers get killed. I don't think Australia people will so still be. There are some political parties in Taiwan that are in favour of unification. Do you think they're just puppets of the Chinese government? They are puppets. They are controlled by Chinese government. Taiwan's rock star politician Freddie Lim says the agitation by people like the White Wolf is all part of Beijing's playbook. So you think China plays dirty? Yes, definitely. In, in some ways, the war has already begun. Yeah, it's not about the war of weapons anymore. They buy your politicians. They, they control your economy. They control your community. They control your religious groups. Yeah, and cyber attacks and, and uh, information warfare. When China decides to make good on its promise to take Taiwan is anyone's guess. But just last month, the head of the US Navy warned America needs to prepare for a possible invasion within the next year. It's a worrying prediction, and for passionate and patriotic locals like Kolos Yataka, it's now critical for the democratic world to stand up to the communist regime before this descends into all-out war. Why do you think the average Australian should care about what's happening here at the moment? 
Why? Because we don't want to feel alone. Because we share the same political idea, and we do believe in democracy. Taiwanese people are just like you. We want to have the right to vote. We want to have our own government. We don't want to be part of China. Actually, we are never part of China at all. We are an independent country. We are just like you. Will Taiwan ever be part of China? No, never, never. Impossible. Taiwan is never and was never part of China at all. Not at all. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.